Welcome into the Daily Roto Sharks podcast. Jeremy Kahn here with you. We've got Ben Jammin, X Ben Jammin X on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Jeremy Kahn 1057. Ben, how you doing? Doing well, man. Uh, glad to have you again. Just looking at some of the uh, in-game fantasy leaderboards. You know, we partnered up with them and it's going real well. We have a free roll and we'll be rolling out some featured contests uh, real soon. Yeah, you guys got to check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just played it last night and had a good time with it. So uh, you'll see me on there a bunch more. But let's let's dive right into this slate because uh, we're going to focus in on the morning slate and a couple of games here that um, and, and you've got some interesting strategy on, on how to attack it. But let's start off with the Nats and the Mariners. It's Gio Gonzalez, left-hander against Ariel Miranda, another lefty. Vegas has the implied run total for Seattle at 4.4. For the Nats, it's 5.2, one of the highest on this slate. You're looking at any of these righty bats for the Nats. And, uh, you know, Anthony Rendon's a guy that I don't typically target. He's been on a bit of a heater, two homers the night before, and then another one this past night. Um, I don't know if you're looking there, but it was pretty chalky this evening on the night slate. Yeah, um, I I like the Nats bats for sure. Uh, definitely the righties there. I can go with any one of them. Randone, Zimmerman, they've all been hot. Worth's a player that can really always heat up. They have, you know, one of the highest uh, run totals, if not the highest tomorrow. So the, they'll be in a definitely good spot. And I like Gio Gonzalez as well. Um, the Mariners have just not been hitting lefties uh, well this year. They have a, uh, what is it, a point. 078 ISO against lefties this year. They just haven't really been striking out at a high clip. So while I'm definitely considering Gio Gonzalez and he'll be chalky, I'm not sure if that's definitely where I want to go. They have um, a pretty bad bullpen, and when you're when you're just talking about the uh, the Nats bats in general, Ariel Miranda's fly ball pitcher gives up 1.78 home run per nine over the last year and a half, and um, uh, he gets hit real hard by by righty, so I, I definitely see uh, the the national side in play tomorrow, and they should be fairly chalky as well. Stack for them or mini stack, or how how are you looking at this? Yeah, so the the way that I would be con considering it, if I if I think they're going to be the chalkiest, which it it you know just a quick glance at the slate does seem like they probably will be. Um, the, the chalkiest stack. One of the things you have to do is try and differentiate yourself somewhere. So you could do like two mini stacks, maybe like Turner Worth or Zimmerman Ren Rendon or like a, a three man with Rendon, Weeders, Taylor or with Worth, Weeders, Taylor or something like that. And then um, I, I think that even though they're in pretty good spots and they're good hitters, Harper and Murphy will be lower owned than they should be. So I really don't have any problem with any of these guys, but what I would do is try and mix it up and not just go your typical two through five or one through four because a lot of people will be doing that on a on a smaller slate. Yeah, and it doesn't look like you're going to have to pay up for too many pitchers on this slate. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of them that are a little pricier than I think you'd like, but that being said, uh, you can probably fit, uh, I mean, if you do it right, uh, whatever batch you wanted to. Yeah, it's, it's not really um, – that expensive of a slate tomorrow you know there's not a lot of high price guys um a couple of outfielders not not many pitchers but um one of the things you can do is if if you think like i do that washington is going to be one of the more popular um teams to play with and Gio gonzalez is going to be popular you can uh take some of the seattle bats because th there are some guys there that crush lefties um, especially Nelson Cruz, you know, like you could use him as a one-off against Gio Gonzalez and, and not be mad about it. Um, Danny, Danny Valencia and Mike Zninu hit lefties well. So, uh, Gene Zagura leading off. I think, I think it will be a sneakier stack. Um, it's more of like a hedge play. Like if you're going to be doing Gio Gonzalez and you're going heavy with him, it's definitely worth it to make a, a, a Seattle stack, but, um, they're, they're not going to be one of my top. Yeah, just a quick thing on weather. It looks like uh, wind's blowing out about 10 miles an hour tomorrow. Obviously, things could change, and looking for some light rain there. Uh, don't forget that Orioles-Nats game was suspended when there was no rain going on. Uh, that was a little weird uh, a couple weeks ago, but still, um, uh, make sure you keep your eye on the weather report. Let, let's go to the Pirates and the Braves, and Pirates are a small favorite here. Ivan Nova, who I know a lot of people have targeted, he's had some good outings, but, man, that Atlanta, you know, down in Atlanta, things have been crazy – when it's raining, not raining, it seems like the balls are flying out a lot more. And the implied run totals here, I, this seems like a game that would have a total of seven or seven and a half if this were last year. And now looking at it this year, 
I mean, the, the, the implied run totals are ridiculous. The Pirates are at 4.7 runs. The Braves at 4.4. Uh, it's Ivan Nova taking on Bartolo Colon. And uh, Colon's one of those guys, he, at this point of his career, mainly pitching to contact. Um, give me your thoughts on the two teams. Do you like Nova and anybody in these lineups? Well, uh, one of the things that, that is important to mention uh, transitioning into this is that th these are bo uh, the game we just discussed and this one are both 12-10 uh, games. And then you're going to have an hour until the next game. So one of the important things to do on a small slate with late swap is actually to pay attention after the first uh, games are going or ending. And then what you can do is try and pivot whether, like, let's say what uh, Washington goes off and, and you don't have them, then you can get a little bit more chalky with your later plays. And if uh, Washington doesn't do well in their chalk, then you can get a, I mean, sorry, if Washington doesn't do well, then you can get a little chalky. And if they do do well, then you could look for more contrarian plays later. So uh, you could do the same thing with this game. And um, I think this will be one of the games that draws uh, a little bit of ownership for sure um, compared to some of the later games that we'll see. Uh, and for good reason. Um, Ivan Nova has been pretty good this year, but like you said, this this park is really looking uh, to be a, a hitter's ballpark, and it's going to be real real nice, a warm day. And I think you can go with uh, the A's and the Pirates bats here, and I, I wouldn't really consider um, either of the pitchers just because I think that uh, both of the, the teams are in really good spots to hit. It looks like 14 degrees out. So... Um, Real quick, well, what are some of your uh, favorite plays? And let's see if they match up with what I'm thinking. Can you hear me? Um, all right, so I'll just keep going. Um, I like Enciarde, Marquecas, um, definitely Matt Adams. I liked him the other night. He hit a home run. He's, he's a guy who has a lot of pop in his bat playing in Atlanta. And I think it's definitely um, – Let's go. I think it's definitely in a, in a good spot to hit another one out. Then on the Pittsburgh side, you have Adam Frazier, who's been pretty hot. You know, you have Cologne pitching the contact. This is a guy who's been getting uh, a, a lot of multi hits lately. So I think we're looking uh, to be in a good spot when uh, when picking batters here on on that side of the plate. You have Josh Bell, John Jaso. Um, I'm not really fond of McCutcheon and Harrison against uh, Cologne nowadays, but. I think you could definitely see some some batters there. Um, you there? It looks like you're frozen. All right. All right. Are you there? You lost me. I'm huh? sorry, man. No, that's all right. You're good. <laughs> yeah, the computer took a crap on me. So, uh, how do you like that? That's gonna happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. So I was just saying, I like um, the lefties from Atlanta and uh, and the lefties from. Um, from Pittsburgh, and, and I'm not really fond of the righties in either situation. Have you been – I mean, how do you feel about Atlanta's new stadium? Do you feel like uh, – I mean, a lot of people are targeting it now with the way the weather's going, and it seemed like there are some jet streams where more home runs are being hit. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely like it as a more of a hitter's ballpark, and especially for lefties. You know, it, that place was, like, built for Freddie Freeman. So um, it, it's a good spot there. And even Matt Kemp, you know, he can go oppo. Um, he, he just prefers to pull the ball a little bit. So, I mean, I definitely see some runs coming out of here. And, and one of the things I was saying is that um, after these games start and you see the ownership, then, then you look and, you know, if, um, if the chalkier team is doing well, then you late swap to a little bit more contrarian plays. But if the, the chalkier early teams don't do well, then that's where you can get a little bit chalkier in your later plays. So it's a, it's a good way to use late swap. And I've really benefited this year from, um, from going down like with a, with a catcher that I thought was going to be a little uh, too popular. You know, I'll just pivot to someone I think no one's going to have just because catchers usually don't do too great anyway. And if you get the one guy who hits a home run at, at like less than 5%, then you're looking really good. So there, there's a, a lot of things to consider with late swap, and I think um, you should really start look, looking and paying attention to that a little bit more. Yeah, next game uh, might get a little chalky as well because the Yankees have an implied run total of five runs. That's Masahiro Tanaka, right-hander against – I have Miguel Almonte listed, uh, another right-hander. Royals implied run total is at 3.6 runs. 
Yankees are a heavy favorite. Um, I don't know if you, do you have anybody else listed? Do you know anything about El Monte? Um, let's see. Um, looking at Brooks baseball, it says he has a, a four seam fastball, 94 miles per hour, got a curve and a, a change with a little bit of a slider. Um, I'm going to look at his usage right now. He throws mostly the four seam and then he just kind of mixes the other pitches in uh, with, uh, not too much um, consistency. So looks like he's a fastball pitcher. And when looking at the Yankees, they're fastball hitters. So um, this this is definitely uh, right in my wheelhouse. Um, it looks like there's going to be a, a lot of humidity and, and some rain. I'm not really sure if it's going to be raining a lot. Um, wind's blowing in, which, you know, I don't really care about much in, in Yankee Stadium because these guys just have a lot of pop. Um, this will be a day that I'll I'll be all over Yankees and they may you know I, I like Washington of course they're they're going to be chalky but I think Yankees will be uh, one of my top stacks if not the top stack tomorrow so name a player on the team and uh, I would be comfortable playing him. I mean, and how about Tanaka though? Let's look at the pitching because this is a guy who the K's are down this year for whatever reason. Um, you know, you, you still probably like him in this spot if you're looking to get the win on FanDuel, the quality start. Uh, he, he can clearly shut down a team and, and get you multiple Ks. But there were times last year we were getting 8, 9, 10 Ks a game, and uh, now we're just not seeing that. It does look like he's pitching to more contact. Yeah, I've never been much of a Tanaka believer, and um, I, I've always said that this guy just gets hit way too often too early. You know, like some of the times, you know, he'll give up a home run or two and then settle down. But if he doesn't settle down, then it's a, a, a you know, crap show. And uh, yeah. this happens often. So you really can get to Tanaka. I think he's overrated. You know, maybe his, his best pitching days are behind him. But, yeah, I, I like some of the uh, Casey Royals as either um, little mini stacks or, or probably just one-offs. I like um, Mike Moustakis, you know, playing in Yankee Stadium, short porch and right. This guy's been on fire. He has three home runs in his last, uh, what, five or six games. Hits, hits righties very well. Um, and then also, uh, I, don't, I don't know if people realize, but this guy, Jorge Bonifacio, has been on fire. He has four home runs in his last five games, and he's been hitting uh, 322 ISO versus righties with a 406. So he's actually hitting righties much better, reverse splits hitter. So um, I think you can pair uh, Moustakis and Bonifacio or even um, consider Brandon Moss if he's in the game. He's a power hitter, and um, Tanaka is known to give up home runs. So I think you can definitely consider any one of those guys there for sure. All right, let's move on to uh, the Rockies and the Phillies. Um, a 1 o'clock start. That's Vincent Velasquez versus Tyler Anderson. Uh, Velasquez was a guy that won the – uh, last year, I, I looked at him a ton, you know, high strikeout upside, um, solid pitcher for a bad baseball team. But this Phillies team has been getting absolutely mashed the past three days by the Rockies. Uh, implied run total for Colorado is 4.4. And for the Phillies, it's 4.2 runs. Uh, Blackman's been fantastic. Uh, since they got Ian Desmond back, it seems like it's added another bat. Trevor Story, uh, is he back tomorrow? Um, but anyway, you know, just looking at the lineups, Right. Any contrarian play? I was talking last night about a contrarian play with the Phillies, and it really didn't work out for me. But um, g give me your thoughts on the Phillies and the Rockies. Yeah, I mean, I I like Colorado against Vince Velasquez, um, and I also like Philly against Colorado. I think this is um, a game stack for tomorrow that if you're going to be um, looking to game stack anything, I think this is the play um, – along with the you know Atlanta Pirates game I think that's game stackable but I think this is a this is your best shot um Vince Velasquez he's a good pitcher he has K upside but he uh, he also gets a little wild yeah um, you know he has a over the last year and a half he has a 3.35 uh walks per nine uh 1.55 home runs per nine or 1.315 uh, whip um a little bit of a fly ball pitcher so you could hit him out and um they Colorado has just an awful, awful uh, bullpen so far. Um, they they just haven't been doing. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Philly has an awful bullpen. They're they're among the worst with a, a 1.76 home run per nine and a 4.9 x x fit. Um, if you don't know what what these mean, uh, definitely go to Fangraphs and and look up the definitions. You can Google them. But uh, on the other side, Tyler Anderson. 
Um, he he's actually looked pretty decent. Um, you know, his his numbers have been impressive. He hasn't been getting hit too hard, um, but I think he's definitely due for a, a little bit of regression here. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't been striking out lefties uh, a ton at all, um, and lefties are, are where you're going to get beat up on um, with Blackman and Cargo. Um, yeah. what, what do you think? Are you you're going to be on uh, anybody specific in this game? Well, I mean, I, you know, it was, it was tough for me because I kept saying that you're the Rockies shredded Philly back-to-back games, and then I was waiting for a chance to jump on some of these Philly bats, which are a little bit cheaper, and you can get them as value plays and fit them in with maybe your favorite stack of the day. And I think a lot of times guys stay away from them, you know. Um, but when it comes to the Rockies, I said it uh, a couple days ago. I don't know if it was – yeah, I think it was – no, it was Scotty and I on the pod. I said every time they come out of Colorado, I feel like they're kind of sneaky because it's not like – I almost feel like Colorado is like steroids. You know, if you're at Coors Field, it gives you confidence. You see these guys come to the plate, and a lot of them carry it onto the road. So sometimes it's a little unfair – over the course of the season, you'll see the the home and road splits, but it doesn't mean they're terrible hitters outside of cores. Um, and, you know, I, I was waiting for guys like Cargo to kind of get going because he was having a terrible year, and Blackman's just been unbelievable. And, uh, you know, as I said, Ian Desmond back in that lineup, a few guys that I like to target. I, yeah, I, the funny thing is I normally stay away from the Rockies bats when they're at cores because it, that's the contrarian to me. It's so hard to go there, with, especially with the prices, and I feel like everybody's going to be on them. But it's a hard thing to, to kind of punt and stay away from. You know what? The the more I'm looking at it, um, Tyler Anderson, he's been pitching real well, and the Phillies they've been striking out at a high clip against lefties. Mm-hmm. I think he would make for an interesting GPP play tomorrow. Um, All right. Now they, you know, there's there's definitely get, he's going to see a lot of righties, but um. I, I think he's due for a little bit of regression, but I think you can also um, use him in GPPs because last three games, seven, eight, and ten Ks, um, you know, you're you're not using him for any kind of consistency. But I, I think I think he's definitely an option, and um, I, I'll be you. I would consider using some of the Philly guys as well in a game stack. Um, but I don't think I would use either team solo. So I'd be game stacking this if I'm using any of the bats. And if not, then I would consider Tyler Anderson on on the Rocky side. I think could be interesting. All right, let's move on to the Angels and the Rays. Um, this Angels team sending out Daniel Wright. Again, another guy I don't know too much about. Uh, Angels, four runs uh, is the implied total for them. Vegas has the, Ray, uh, the Rays at 4.6 runs. That's Matt Andrees. Um, and you know what, he, he's an intriguing option too, but again, a, a guy like, and we talked about a handful of different pitchers on last night's podcast that you never know what you're going to get from him. And, and he's the guy that at home, I, I think he's a little bit better, but you're also looking at some of these lefty bats with Tampa Bay. I mean, Dickerson's right. been on fire, um, that homeless Amishman, uh, that, uh, that is Colby Rasmus. He hit a home run tonight. And, I mean, he looks absolutely filthy, but against right-handed pitching, he rakes low mo. Uh, a lot of interesting left-handed bats uh, throughout this lineup. And then, of course, on the flip side, I mean, you can always look at Trout and Maven batting in front of him has been killing it. But, you know, I'm looking at his price. It's it's getting up there, too. Well, look at that game log. I mean, 18, 36, 21, 12 points for, for Maven. You know, he's, he's had a, a hit in one, two, three, four, five of his – no, uh, six of his last seven games. So he, he's been pitching real well. Matt Andreese isn't anything to be feared. You know, he's, he's been pitching decently this year, but he's been giving up a lot of hits per game, uh, co- you know, a lot of home runs. He's given up uh, five home runs in his last six games. So, you know, there, there's definitely uh, runs to be scored there. And, you know, <laughs> Trout's been crushing. Maben's been crushing. Um, you still have Calhoun in there, but right. He's pretty well. Um, Luis Valbuena um, sometimes becomes a decent GPP option. Um, I'm really waiting for him to come back around because, you know, we saw last year that he, he crushes righties. Um, you know, he hits over 200 ISO against them. Um, he just hasn't been doing it this year. So he's someone that should you should be looking for a rebound at some point um, because, you know, he is a home run hitter, and, and that's kind of it. On the other side, I, I I like the Rays a lot tomorrow. Um, 
they they all hit righties well. This guy, Daniel Wright, you know, he doesn't look like someone who's going to be truly impressing us. He gives up a ton of hits, a lot of earned runs every game. And, you know, you have Dickerson, who, who's been hitting home runs from the leadoff spot. Uh, the guy's just been on a tear. He's uh, a little expensive, but for an outfielder, you know, that's that's not – going to break the bank at 3,900. I love Kevin Kiermeyer. He has steel upside. Even if he hasn't been doing well, he's always someone that um, at that price can um, can hit value. Logan Morrison, I think is going to be one of my uh, top first base GPP plays tomorrow and uh, Colby Rasmus. I think these guys are, are all in play tomorrow. Yeah, and it's tough to get away from those lefty bats. And we, For a while there, we were talking about how much the Rays strike out, but against right-handed pitching they've been hitting the long ball consistently and and you know for a lot of those guys uh, the prices are fair too I mean again when you talk about stacking the Rays you can get them in the lineup outside of Dickerson whose price went up um all right now I want to get your thoughts on this but when you're looking at all those lefty bats do you also throw in Longoria with a game stack because it seems like people forget about him when you go up against right-handed pitching um probably not what I would be doing with Tampa is doing probably uh two or three man mini stacks when um i i like doing four man stacks four and four man stacks but when i know a team's going to be popular i'm going to try and pick out one or i mean no sorry one or two or three guys on that team that i like and piece them with other things that may be contrarian so i think there there will be some ownership on on dickerson i don't think as much on morris but um Morrison when but when you compare them together that's when you get some lower ownership so I yeah I, I don't really like to to take people um in in non you know righty I mean in non platoon splits if uh if they're not you know a reverse splits hitter or something like that let's move on to the final game here it's uh, the Cubbies and the Giants it's Jeff Samarja and Eddie Butler right now is what I have listed uh, I don't have any implied run totals, no total in the game just yet. But so when you were talking about switching off and pivoting from the early games, is is this kind of a game you'll target, or could it be any one of the other two o'clock games, depending on if you can kind of figure out what ownership looks like on the first two? Um, I mean, Samarja is probably the hottest pitcher on the slate, honestly. Going against um, the Cubs, you know, a lot of people will be scared to go there, and it, you know, it's not ideal because they are a team that could really hit the ball. And there's a lot of guys who, who hit righties very well. Um, I think when, when considering all the pitchers on the slate, that it's, it's not a bad idea to look at Samarja as a pitcher. I think um, it's, it's going to be the case that people would probably rather be on the Cubs bats than on um, Samarja. And even people who look at the game logs will also know that the Cubs are the Cubs. And last year they had a phenomenal year. But, you know, you're looking at Samarja. He's pitched um, at least seven innings in five in uh, four of his last five games. Um, the other one was the six innings. And in four of his last games, he's pitched at least uh, eight strikeouts. So, you know, the guy's been pitching well. Um, he's been giving up hits. He has, he's only walked one person in his last five games. So that shows me the control is, is really there this season. Um, so for me, I'd be more on the San Francisco bats. I think they're going to start turning it around and we've seen Denard Spann uh, hit a couple home runs. We've seen panic and belt start to heat up a little bit. So I think this is the time that we start hopping back on the the San Francisco lefties and um, they, they're, you know, they've won me a lot of money over the past couple of years. Um, you know, I, I love that span is there. You have panic belt and Crawford. And um, this is a situation where you can use Posey um, in this, in this matchup because he's a, uh, he's, you know, he's someone who gets on base and he's he'll single people in and he's just a, a productive hitter. Um, but I don't know if you want to spend the 3.6 K. So I'd probably just stack up all the lefties um, and, and call it a day there, uh, and use maybe a Cubs as a, a one-off or two-off with Schwarber or Rizzo or Hap, and, um, but I, I wouldn't be stacking them. Well, real quick, just to kind of recap everything from today, we, we talked about you know possible Nats stack, a Yankee stack, uh, maybe game stack in the Colorado-Philly game. Uh, you talked about liking some of the Tampa Bay bats, the lefties, and a couple mini stacks in there if you want to differentiate. 
and he just brought up some of the Giants lefties as well. Um, am I missing anything? Are those the, the kind of stacks you liked um, from what we went through? Yeah, so, um, you know, when, when we talk about here, this is always a first glance. And w what I like to do is, you know, when I have time, I uh, a lot of people, you'll hear this in, um, you know, in uh, uh, sports, uh, sports uh, like uh, TEDx kind of stuff and, you know, sports science and people who really um, – know this subject but visualiz visualization is key for me you know i try to uh, picture how the slate's going to play out and um, one of the things i like to do is try and think about where people are going going to be going and and then make a, a lot of decisions off that but um what we do here is we narrow down right so th then i have a list of the stacks that i like and then i'll start trying to configure them together and see which i like best but um I think what's what's more important to to note is uh, I, I really only have like th let's see like three or four pitchers that I like so I, I'm I'm gonna I usually try to target my pitchers first and and figure out which ones I like and then um, go with one or two of my favorite and then try and build the stacks around that instead of um, building with the stacks first most of the time um, because I think that's when you kind of fall into the trap of not using the pitchers that you're you're highest on and i think that's what's most important so for me you know I, i'll be building around um geo gonzalez jeff samarja um and then um, maybe ivan nova against atlanta but um probably tyler anderson as a a gpp play so once i i get those four guys that I'm looking at. Then I'll I'll go into the advanced stats and wait for the lineups and see who has the best matchup um, after lineups come out. And that's when I'll make my final decision on the pitcher, right? And then I start loading my pitcher in, and then decide, okay, which stacks do I like best? Probably um, Yankees, Tampa Bay, Washington, and San Fran, right? Th those will probably be my top ones. Then I got to think, all right which one's going to be most popular, which one's going to be least popular. And I don't, you know, do this specifically every time, but this is one of the ways that I'll look at it. You know, I'll, I'll look at Washington who's the most popular and probably San Francisco who will be one of the least popular, like full stacks. And I'll pair them together because you'll find some value from San Francisco and you'll pay up a little bit more with Washington. So, you know, that that's one of the ways I'll do it. And then I'll also have to decide, Am I going to use Gio Gonzalez in my stack with Washington? You know, because there's correlation yeah. there. If if the bats do well, then the pitcher should get the win and and be able to hold on to that. So, um, it, it it's it's all like a, a a giant chess game, and and these are some of the things that I think about. Yeah, I still don't know why Fanduel won't let you. If you take a pitcher, you can only take three batters in a stack. Um, I never understood that. I, I think it's two totally separate things, but. Um, on DraftKings, obviously, you can sit there and stack them up any way you want. Yeah, I. I um, all right, well, you know, let's um let's jump into the little game we play. We like to pick some of the the batters. I'll actually let you go first. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot easier with the dong detector. He's been Scotty's been killing it, man, in this game, uh, picking guys left and right that went yard. I think we were talking about Didi Gregorius last time, and a handful of other guys that just, that just knocking it out of the park. But uh, go ahead, I'll give you first pick. Yeah, um, I usually try and do like long shots because I think those are the ones that pay off the most. Um, but yeah, Scott has been killing it. He's been. What did you say? I said you feel the best about those, right? When you get the the long shot, right? And they help the most in your lineup. Um, but yeah, Scott has been killing it. He's been killing it yeah. with the non detector articles all all season so far, and you know it's it's every night he has a couple of them on there. Um, but but uh. One of the guys that uh, I like and I think is in a good spot tomorrow to, to hit a home run and I think at uh, at lower ownership will be uh, Mike Moustakas. The Moose against Tanaka. All right, um, I'll, I'll go a little chalky here. I'll go Nolan Arenado. I know he's going up against a right-hander, but it's hard to not like him um, in any game for that matter. And then I'll, I'll try to get off the beaten path, and, and we talked about him. Uh, I like Logan Morrison, a uh, cheap little – Left-hander, actually, he's not that cheap anymore, but um, nice little spot there for him against a young right-hander. Yeah, Lomo. Yeah, Lomo's been crushing, man. 
Um, all right, I'll go uh, Matt Adams, Atlanta. Yeah, Matt Adams, a nice little pickup there. I think only on FanDuel you get him in the outfield. Uh, DraftKings is he first base and outfield, or just first base eligible? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I I think I'm pretty sure Matt Adams is listed as uh, first base on on FanDuel. Is he now? Because uh, I was playing him in the outfield at the beginning of the week. Yeah, I mean he's 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 always been a, a first base on there, but um in the beginning of the season, a lot of the the positions were kind of off on FanDuel. Um, he's first base and outfield on DraftKings. All right. Hey, one, one other thing I wanted to check in with you because we were talking about the um, Clayton Kershaw stuff with the 1,500 players, 1,600. He didn't get the win that night. He pitched great. Did, did you target anybody for the Cardinals and try to get one of those cheap players in any of your lineups? Um, in the the three-game late slate that I did, I used uh, Molina in one of them. But besides that, no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> it, it was funny. Like, Every podcast I listened to in the industry was basically touting the Cardinals. Like, yeah. oh, you should play them. They're, they're so cheap. Kershaw is not the same Kershaw, blah, blah, blah. And, and to me, it's like, well, Kershaw is still one of the best pitchers on the planet. You know, like, I'm not expecting to, to use them at the ownership that they were going to be because they're, they're, they weren't sneaky plays by any means. People were talking about using them. So for me, like if I hadn't heard a single person talking about it all day, then I would have considered it more, but no, like I'm, I'm not taking them against, against Kershaw. Everyone's saying, Oh, you know, they crushed Kershaw. They have, you know, BVP versus Kershaw. And most of that stuff was from years ago. And, and I don't think any of it really matters, but, um, what, what about you? Did you use them? Um, I, I took a shot on, uh, I don't remember if it was Grichik or Piscotti uh, just because of yeah, – there were a couple of bigger bats. Yeah, I was trying to go with a right-handed bat against Kershaw and hoping that – I can't uh, I can't remember who it was. I think I got a walk, so I got my three points. At least you'll Great. get – oh, sorry. At least you'll get some lower ownership with those guys. Like going with Fowler, like everyone's yeah. like, oh, BVP, BVP. The guy hit um, like 20 – had 20 hits off Kershaw and like – 16 of them were singles and most of them were pre 2013. So I was looking at like, you can't use these numbers, you know, like, and the, all like all the extra base hits were in Colorado. So it, it's, I, I don't think it's comparable. No but, question. Um, I, I think when, um, you know, just, just kind of doing the, the overview of the slate and, and just things to think about, um, the the most important thing for me on on small sites, and you know, I, I love small sites, is is to identify the chalk. And if I know that something's going to be super popular, then I almost always try and stay away from it. So, one of the things I recommend is read other people's articles, see who everyone in the industry is on, listen to podcasts, because you know you don't have to use their plays, but knowing where everyone's going and trying to think about the ownership is, at least to me, very important. So once you figure that out, then you can start building and, and figure out what you need to do. And one of the, the strategies that I've used this year is, is the late swap thing that I was, I was telling you guys about. So um, if you know that there's going to be a, a chalky team early with, uh, you know, Washington, whatever, um, I, I, one of the things you can do is make a dummy lineup and just put it at, you know, the, the one o'clock games and just don't have a single game at 12:10. And and this is obviously if you're, you know, you're not making a ton of lineups. This is because you know, it's harder to mass edit them once it starts, but um if you do this, you know, you kind of just watch and see how it plays out and then, you know, if the chalky team, you know, and you look at the ownership obviously, if the chalky team like I was saying before um, doesn't go off, then you can get a little bit more chalky with your your later yeah. lineups because you, you already know kind of what's playing out on the slate and if if the chalky team does do really well and you don't have them then that's where you get a little bit more off the wall because you're going to have to get low ownership and and high scoring in order to to catch up against them so um the, these are things that i really think you need to think about more than just the player in your lineup but who else is using them and can you get your lineup itself to be contrarian. It's not about the individual player and, oh, I need one person at 
this ownership and one person at this ownership. You need to make sure that your lineup is different from other people in GPPs. In cash, not as much, but in GPPs, you need to really try and differentiate. And baseball, you have to embrace the variance, and uh, that's where I've had a lot of my success. No question. Uh, you know, a lot of interesting information there, and you can find great information all over the place at dailyrotosharks.com. And Ben, I'll be back tomorrow uh, with the big slate on Friday. You know, we have we always got those big slates. Every once in a while, there's an afternoon game, but it'll be fun to dive into some of these pitching matchups and uh, get back into things. But appreciate the time tonight, and make sure you guys head on over to dailyrotosharks.com for all your information. Absolutely. You know, it's a pleasure having you, and I appreciate you hosting and doing what you do and you've been killing it and you're great at what you do brother so uh, good luck everybody and uh, have a good night